I would like to welcome my local cable channel, WMCT-TV, in Marlborough, Mass., as an affiliate of Norm Nathan's Vault of Silliness. Now, I don't know about you, but I get quite a few local channels from the surrounding communities, so even if you're not in Marlborough, you just may be able to find it on your cable carrier. It will air later in the evening while the message boards fill your screen with that all-important community info. The idea here is to begin with episode one and roll on from there. When the time comes to incorporate a video aspect, we just may move to prime time. Wink, wink. Granted, by the time this episode airs, everything I just said will be old news. We are just so darn thankful to WMCT for expanding the reach of our silliness. I have titled this dumb birthday game from May 13th, 1996, Truth, Lies, and Analog Tape. From the moment we press play, the game is on. But the first birthday is absent. A side note here. We are joined in the teen canteen by reporters from some local papers that are covering this highly contested competition. The Brockton Enterprise, the Middleborough Gazette, the Chelsea Record, the Salem Evening News, and the Linfield Saugus Hadassah Newsletter. Our players, Lisa, Susan, Tess in the studio, Karen Regal in traffic, Michael in Arlington, and Mike Epstein producing and playing. The birthdays. The first one? Question mark. We don't know. Harvey Keitel, a mystery actor to most of the panel. Peter Gabriel and Norm Singh Sledgehammer. Dennis Hillary Rodham Rodman. Then we grab some birthdays from May 15th. Lainey Kazan? Nope. Trini Lopez? Pass. Anna Maria Alberghetti? Yeah, she gets the nod. The game is actually held over until after the news because of commercial content. And when we return, Karen from Traffic has vanished. But we do continue with Eddie Arnold and Lainey Kazan and Trini Lopez make a triumphant return to the list. Do you ever wonder what happens to the dumb birthday game score sheets? They are all entered into the WBZ Hall of Fame, where broadcasting is our middle name. Some classic commercial content, BJ's Cellular Centers and Cellular One. Living Trust Seminars with attorneys Guillermo and Cody of Braintree. And a Jack Benny impression begins a commercial, but it gets cut off. A post-game caller talking jazz closes out this episode. Episode 86, Truth, Lies, and Analog Tape is all hooked up and ready to analyze. Again in just a moment. Okay. Uh, today is the birthday, I mentioned the birthday of Harvey Keitel. Let's see, what can I tell you about Harvey Keitel? He's from Brooklyn, New York. His films include Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore, Taxi Driver, Bugsy, and most, more, the most recently one, one uh, was The uh, Piano. Do you all know uh, Harvey Keitel? No. Not at all. Not at all. Not real well. <laughs> <laughs> here's a guy, here's a guy, I just listed uh, four movies all really major movies that he's been in. One Robert of the great Ryan actors of our time. Movies. And uh, and no, nobody remembers him at all. Harvey Keitel. So you'll just have to... I've heard of a lot of those movies, but I haven't seen any of them. Oh, uh, I, I don't think... years on them? Pardon me? Seen? Well, Bugsy... Bugsy was that the one on Bugsy Siegel. That was with Warren Beatty. That and that's where he met... Hold on a minute. He, he met, he met uh, his current wife... Uh, Annette Benning. Annette Benning was in that oh. movie, and they married after that. But Harvey Keitel also was in that. I can't remember what he played. He played Mike Epstein, I think, who was a radio producer. <laughs> was, was it just a cameo? No, I, I can't remember. Anyway, let's start with uh, you, Lisa. Anyway, do you know Harvey Keitel? Uh, do you have any years for <laughs> any of those movies? Well, Bugsy, Bugsy was uh, relatively recently. Yeah. But Taxi Driver and Alice, those, that was in the 70s. I think yeah. yeah, they go back a yeah. bit. The piano was, what, last year? Last year, sure. So a couple of those go back, like, 20 years. So um. It's kind of tough, I know, to guess that somebody who's, uh, who you can't picture and you're not sure about. But I'm depending on you, Lisa. I really am depending on you so badly. Uh, I'll try. Yeah. Um, 56. 56. <clears throat> okay. And, uh, Susan, what do you say? Oh, Lord, you don't know whether he's the major character or the 
the father, the son, or anything. No, he played a female impersonator. Oh, Lord. Uh, I made that no, up. No, did he? No, 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 he did not. I made that up. I made that up. All right, but they're recent. Uh, well, all right, the, the I'm re- guessing that he's a younger person. The recent, uh, the recent one's the piano, which was last year, but he also goes back a few years with, uh, like, Alice doesn't live here anymore. Taxi Driver was a few years back. Uh, okay, uh, I, w- I was going to say 38. Uh, let me jump to 51. Okay, 51. And uh, Tess, what do you think? I think he's 53. 53. Uh, Karen, what do you say? 54. Karen says 54. What's that? Are you mumbling? <laughs> Sorry, you must be hearing things. <laughs> I, I heard no, mumble. I heard something. Yeah. Michael, what do you think? This is Michael in Arlington. Yeah. Right? Um, oof. Uh, 54. 54. Yeah. Hey. Okay. <laughs> and uh, Mike Epstein, what do you think? I think that uh, Harvey Keitel is... 55. 55. Okay. We got some who are very, very close. Harvey Cartel is 57. Oh, and oh, Lisa man. said 56. Oh, man. Let's see. Did anybody say 58? Nobody did. And so Lisa has won that round and also has two correct answers. Walking away with it. Oh, she's, well, I wouldn't say walking away with it, but... It's all over. She, no, it's not all over. <laughs> Don't give up so no, quickly. It's all over. But she, but she has two, and uh, Tess has one. And uh, how about Peter Gabriel, the uh, singer? Peter Gabriel, let's oh, see. Okay. Uh, born in London, lead singer of Genesis from 1966 oh. to 1975. Here's some dates now. You can try to figure out his age from that. He was, uh, again, from in Genesis 66 to 75. He was replaced by Phil Collins. Uh, Peter's biggest hit. Sledgehammer. Good was, song. Was, that was 1986. Can you sl- sing a little bit of that for us? Uh, I don't think so. No, 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 no. no. I thought you'd come a little bit just little. to give us an idea of what it sounded like. Just the first <laughs> couple of lines. Lost <laughs> Cora? Mm. Yeah, if you don't, because I will if you don't. You can go for it, Noah. Okay. Oh, I fell for you like a sledgehammer. <laughs> yeah, 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 something like that. Was that am I close? <laughs> yeah, I wanna be a sledgehammer. <laughs> Says it. Karen. What you call my name, whatever that means. I'm, yes. It has like a a lot of things like that in it. Like I wanna be your bumper car and stuff like that. You hit me off the head with your sledgehammer. <laughs> Cause exactly I, what it said. Yeah, because yeah. I love you very much, you cats and jammer, something like that. <laughs> and I had it, and it had um, he pioneered with videos, really. Yeah, like, he was very good with early videos. Brilliant, oh, okay. like video type techniques, new ones. I take it from all of that. Oh, his second. Oh, here's here's, here's uh, some uh, additional information. Just he scored him. the film, then he's going to arrange the film and Rick wrote it for Last Temptation of Christ. I don't have a year on that. But you do have Sledgehammer in 1986 and the Genesis 66 to 75. So I'll give you an idea of the of the age range. And we'll go to uh, Tess. What do you think? How old is Peter Gabriel? 46. 46. Okay. What do you think, Mike Epstein? I think Peter Gabriel is a robust. <laughs> I don't know why I say robust, but what the heck? Let's go with it. I think he's actually about 52. 52. Yeah. Okay, I wrote robust next to that. No, very good. So that we very may preserve good. that. Because, uh, as you know, the score sheets in this go up to the WBC Hall of Fame. Which is now the CBS Hall of Fame. The CBS? That's right. That's We're right. CBS now. We don't even use the term Westinghouse anymore, no. do we? No. Kakpui to you, George exactly. Westinghouse. Yeah. You founded this whole thing with your air brakes and everything. <laughs> Now we're yeah. done with you, buddy. Yeah, now toast. we're done with you. We don't even sell refrigerators or washing no. machines anymore. We're we're big time in broadcasting. That's all we do. That's all we do. Broadcasting That's is our middle right. name. <laughs> 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 and we work for this outfit. Isn't that wonderful? For now, yeah. For now. <laughs> <laughs> Until they go to the longer tapes and hear exactly. recordings of what we did tonight. Uh, excuse me, do you know guys like Ep Mike Ep? Epstein is his name, and uh, Norm Nathan. <laughs> like that. No, no Nathan, or is it Les Nathan or something like that? Uh, we heard him on during the night. Uh, was, um, this past uh, was, was, was a Monday morning, and uh, I really do believe that 
having them work uh, for this outfit now that we're on the way up with a network and everything. <laughs> I think uh, I think they're disgraceful is what it, what it is. And uh, I think we get rid of them and then we can move even faster and higher above. Thank you. <laughs> maybe maybe the next move they'll buy an oil company and really <laughs> stick it to everybody. <laughs> I'm really digging my own grave, aren't I? <laughs> anyway, Susan, how old do you think Peter Gabriel is? Well, Peter... Peter Gabriel, he sounds like a true intellectual. <laughs> um, Don't be deceived. I'd say about 46. About 46. Okay, he said uh, the same thing Tess did. Uh, Michael, what do you think? Uh, let's see. Let's go 48. 48. Okay, and uh, Karen? 50 norm. 50 norm. Okay, 50 N O R M. <laughs> okay, or if my father said it would be N A H M. Nom. Anyway, Lisa, what do you say? Uh, I want to say 52 also. 52 also, the same as what Mike's, Mike Epstein said. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, Peter Gabriel actually is 46. Oh. Uh -oh. Okay, that means that uh, Tess is uh, now tied with two with uh, Lisa. Wow. She said 46, and so did Susan. Got who one. Not, as a result, has entered the scoring column. No, that well, well the others have only got that two. That was awesome. I was thinking of 46 before she said that. And I have no clue as to who he is. That's a beautiful <laughs> thing. <laughs> that is beautiful. Only in I'm America. Sure but I love Genesis. That. Okay. So then, okay. So you could figure the years he was with Genesis. Uh, I was giving it a shot. And you gave it a good shot. Okay. Okay, how about the Dennis Rodman? Mm -hmm. uh, he's the uh, Rodham, actually, R-O-D-H-A-M. He's got the same name as uh, Hillary Clinton, isn't he? Rodham. They're related. Was that yeah. his name? Are they related? Of course. No, I didn't know that. What kind of, what, what's the relationship? Um, third cousins. Are they really? No. She's lying like a rug. Oh, she's, oh, I see. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I, I can tell. You, you, you can, uh, the, I know that you have a vibrations machine there. <laughs> That indicates lying and not lying just by the... It's a meter. The, that meter, yeah. It's a the, psychic meter. The quirkiness of the way it prints out, the printout, yeah. as you can tell. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, NBA, it's kind of like a, a, a lie detector. Right. In fact, that's what exactly. it is. That's it is basically it is. a lie detector. Mm -hmm. I kind of... I wonder about that, uh, Karen, because uh, I understand that you will not even go out with... Are you married? No, I'm not. And you will not go out with a guy unless he takes a lie detector test first. <laughs> this that is true. Thing? Yeah. That scares off a lot of guys, you know. Well, you know, the honest ones don't mind. You know, I never thought of it that way. I think you're so right. So you screen out all the losers, you know, right off. <laughs> you don't have to waste any time going out with them and well, sitting in a right. movie theater. That's right. When he, when he comes over, <laughs> he calls you. He's a harsh mistress, this yeah, one. Um, he, he calls you and he says... Can we go to the movies? Can we have a little soda afterwards, like an ice cream? They don't do that anymore, do they? Go to the ice cream parlor anymore. <laughs> and you say, come over. I'll give you a lie detector test. It's important to me. And somehow they shy away when you start strapping stuff around their their their, their uh, elbows and electrodes. stuff. But electrodes. But the honest, strong ones, Norm, they don't mind. They don't mind at all. <laughs> the as fearless result. ones don't mind the electrodes. And as a result, you haven't had a date since about 19, uh, eight, uh, 1994, I think, was the last time. <laughs> I believe it was in the middle of uh, February. <laughs> anyway. Following me again. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Dennis Rodham, the uh, NBA star, sometimes referred to as basketball's bad boy. I like to say that with Dennis that. Rodham or Dennis Rodman? I think, it's, I, think, I think it's Rodman. I think it's Rodman. It is Rodman. It is Rodman. It's, it's yeah. printed here as Rodham. I the think panel agrees. The pa panel agrees. Dennis, from here on, you will be known as Rodman. And don't try to fool us again. He would not have pa passed that uh, lie detector test uh, with you at all, Karen. Because he's a lying person. So you see person. the value of it. I can, I, you know, I'm beginning to see the value of it. I'm beginning to think of instituted uh, it, uh, a lie detector test into my own social life. <laughs> Miserable and nothing as that may be at the moment. Oh, I don't want to even think about it. It's making me cry. Okay, let's start with you, uh, Michael and Arlington. How old do you think Dennis Rodman is? 31. And how old do you think Red Dennis Rodham is? No, that's a, that's a bad joke. Uh, let's see. Uh, Karen. His, nickname, his nickname's The Worm, by the way. Oh, The Worm, yeah. <laughs> okay. That's a cute nickname, isn't it? <laughs> 
Uh, Very warm and snuggly sounding. Yeah, this it is kind of adorable <laughs> and wriggly. My name is Dennis Rodman, but you can call me, honey, the worm. <laughs> call me worm, the worm baby. Okay. Hey, that's what Madonna called him. <laughs> Has she been going out with him? Oh, yeah, they had a little fling. Previously, yeah. Oh, did they? Yeah. He's not the father of the uh, baby or no. anything. No. no. He said she was okay in bed. <laughs> oh, did he say that? Yeah, oh, just that... okay. Oh, oh I see. <laughs> well, radio has become so daring, hasn't it? Eh? <laughs> Isn't he the one who wears, like, the feather boas and stuff yes. when he goes yes. outside? Yes. And, and the yes, red and orange and purple and green and every other color hair under the rainbow. And he right. enjoys he's it. color all the time, I guess, yeah. Well, you guys are turned on more by him than by Harvey Keitel, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> How old do you think uh, Dennis Rod uh, Rodman is then, Kara? Uh, 26. 26. Okay, how about you, Susan? No, I'm. Could I ask you? Is he a current player? Yep. Is he colored? I guess he is. He is. He's an Afro American, yes, and he's uh, plays basketball, as we said, and he's known as basketball's bad boy. Uh, also, the worm we just how discovered. About, how about thirty? Thirty. Does the fact that he's an Afro American and instead of a Caucasian, does that? Pin down his age a little easier for you. No, it's just a, an active current. player. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know how how old they get I when they retire. Yeah, no, no, that's a that's good. Too. That's a good point. That's that's an excellent point. An excellent, an excellent. <laughs> point. And I've been. Are doing you impressed? It. I'm terribly I'm impressed. I'm impressed. We, see, we're all impressed. I am. Oh, I yeah. am too, yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mike, Mike Epstein, what do you think? I think uh, Dennis is 29. 29. And uh, Lisa? That's what I was sort of thinking, too. I really don't know. Go with it. I guess I will. Go with yeah. it. 29, then? I'll talk uh, to you. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. And what do you, <laughs> what do you think, of, uh, Tess? Well... Mikey, I hate to do this to you, but he's 28. Oh, baby, what are you doing? Uh, <laughs> oh, you led me wrong. No, actually, he's 35. Oh, oh, wow. yeah. So don't be lured by some of the sirens on this program. <laughs> Michael Michael from Arlington said... I'm on the board. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> yes. Michael said 31, so he came the closest, actually. Oh, right. Wow. I'm, you, I'm, I'm a bit shocked, though, that he's 35. He's 35? Yeah, really? well, that's what, yeah, that's what he is. He's 35 years old and still able to I had to a minute to recount. Around. Well, yeah, I did okay, too. okay, here's a recount. <laughs> here's a recount. The I results of the like recount that. is he's 35. Wow. <laughs> So much for the reason. Okay. If you all hold on just a minute, what we're going to do is uh, some more commercials. It's terribly important we do that. It's coming up to news time. And uh, I have to go to uh, Wednesday, no, uh, May 15th, because there aren't too many well known people born between now and then. How about. Uh, who'd you, who'd you, I'll ask you guys. You want Lainey Kazan or Trini Lopez? Neither. Neither one of them. No, there's certainly any. Oh, how about Anna Maria Alberghetti? Oh, there you go. Okay, let's do Anna Maria Alberghetti. There you go. Okay, Anna Maria oh, Alberghetti. Sure. Okay. Who is that? Who knows? Okay, I want to die. Who knows? You know Anna Maria Alberghetti. I do. Anna Maria Alberghetti in a push cart, honey. You better be ready about <laughs> half past. That, that's the line. She from does the Italian best, sauce huh? commercials. That's right, she does. She uh, did, she's an actress, singer, starred in films as a teenager. She appeared on the. At the Godfrey show, you know. Oh, yes, she appeared with me many, many times. <laughs> oh, she won a Tony in 1962 for Carnival and had her own salad dressing, which is what the test just said. That's Anna Maria Alberghetti. That's a pretty name. Okay, how old do you think uh, she is, Susan? What do you think? Oh, golly, I would have liked to have taken a clue from other people. I'll try 61. I know it's it's hard to be the first one to go, but if you win it, it doesn't matter. I didn't. I'm not that familiar with any of the three. <laughs> it didn't matter. Well, you've already got you got the Peter Gabriel. That was no, that. I know, but I meant Trini Lopez. I wouldn't know where to go. Oh, oh, with that. or, or, or yeah, Lanny. Yeah. If I, I if I were if I didn't have the answers in front of me, I would I would be doing terribly on this. No, I, mean, make I can, feel I can better. play some roughly, but sometimes it's a surprise, though, you know, which is fun. Okay, how about you, Michael and Arlington? How old do you think Anna Maria Alberghetti is? Uh, no, I think I'm going to go with 66. 66. Okay, and Lisa, what do you think? Uh, 
I was doing so well up until right now. Um, I have no idea. Um, because you're tied with the test, so, I know. <clears throat> and, um, so either one of you could just walk off with all the uh, apples. And I don't know. Um, 62, did you say, was, was when she did something? What, what did you say? She won an award in yeah, 62. Yeah, Tony for Carnival in 1962. Tony is the stage production, as you know. Right. Okay, we better hurry it along, because I only got about a minute before the news. So what do you think? Well... Let's see, that, that's 30 some years ago. Um, 69. 69. Okay, Tess? 65. Tess is 65. And uh, Karen? Are you there, Karen? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, 70, maybe. 70, maybe. <laughs> I, have no, I don't even know who this woman is. <laughs> okay, so. Anna Marie Albregetta. She's a, an attractive mm -hmm. lady and, a, and a, has a fine voice. Uh, Mike Epstein, what do you think? 84. 84? <laughs> you saying that? I didn't get anything anyway, so what the heck? Oh, I see. She's probably 84. Elita, yes, she is. 85. No, she's not. I made that up. She's actually 60. And so uh, Susan got that, which means, Susan said 61, which means that there's now a three-way a three tie. Can we hold it over? So, yeah, no, hold... Well, we could. I suppose we could hold over till after the news. Yeah, I suppose we could do that. Unless you want to send us all prizes. I'd oh, I that. was thinking of that, too. Anyway, WBC Boston. So we have a three-way tie, and I'm too cheap. Well, mostly, uh, actually, not too cheap, because actually, to, you know, I was going to say to send out the, the prizes to three people. Uh, I have a lot of clutter in my house, and it would be a pleasure to get rid of a lot of that junk, which is part of the dumb birthday game. But... Um, too lazy to package it all, so we'll play one more round and to see if we can break the tie. Are you? Let's see. Uh, everybody's is there. Let me see who's there. You're all there, Susan, Michael, and Lisa. Yeah, here. <laughs> you all get kind of tired. Is <laughs> the, the the voice the voice level seems to be dropping a little bit, but I don't blame you. It is getting kind of late, but I'm glad to, glad you hung in. Hey, you got to get those commercials in. Got to get those commercials. Terribly important to get those commercials. Yeah, in. but I think it's better that you send it because it seems like you have more commercials than you used to. The normal, so, yeah. So you get two reverse. You're, you know, you used to do eight. I don't know how many we've done, but I don't think we've we've done quite a quite quite. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, eight birthdays. You mean that's right? Yeah. No, actually, we've done uh, we've only done six. Right, because we have all these added commercials. We don't get as many birthdays. No, no, know. that's true. Oh, plus, it, plus, no, it. yeah, plus at the beginning we talked an awful lot, too. So we'll, we we can still do a couple of more. Hey, uh, for example, today is the birthday of Eddie Arnold. Isn't that interesting? The Tennessee mm. Plowboy. You know Eddie Arnold, country and western singer. Not today. Uh, as a matter of fact, his birthday is is May fifteenth, which would be Wednesday. I can tell you about him, and. Uh, he was born Richard Edward Arnold near Henderson, Tennessee, the Tennessee Plowboy. I'll bet you he's, he's, never, he's never plowed a single inch of farmland in his entire life. I, I just never trust singing cowboys. I feel, or singing hillbillies or whatever. I feel like they decided to sing instead of doing any work on the land. But then again, who knows? Who knows? Thank you. Uh, anyway, he was elected to the Country Hall, uh, Country Music Hall of Fame in 1966. That gives you a clue there. That was 30 years ago. He recorded over 145 country records that made the charts. That is, they got that popular. His biggest hit was "Make the World Go Away." <laughs> that was that was a big thing here too. You can tell I'm a big fan of his. Yeah. <laughs> he and Tom Bod Boden. And when was that? That was 1960. Oh, I, uh, that was 1965. That was even a year before he made the uh, Country Music Hall of Fame. What's it? Baudet? No, Tom Baudet, Baudet is the yeah. guy I'm thinking of. The uh, with Motel Six. Motel, Motel Six, Motel. yeah. Because he's another monotonous person. You ever read any of his books, though? No, are they pretty good. They are hilarious. Are they Tom really? Tom Baudet is a real person. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, that's his real name, Tom Baudet. Because when he talks, he talks kind of in a monotone. Yeah. And we'll leave the light on for you, and I try not to raise my voice at all or express any kind of enthusiasm. I'm sure, I that, just I'm sure that's just a shtick. I just, yeah, that's right. I just talk yeah. in a straight line there. You probably want some 
Anyway, we have fresh water here, and we don't charge you extra for it, and we'll keep the light on for you. Anyway, well, anyway, back to Eddie Arnold. In addition to making records, Eddie helped develop the luxury Nashville suburb of Brentwood. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> no, I never, no, sir, I never plowed much land, even though they call me this Tennessee plow boy, but I developed suburbs and things of that nature, you know. Oh, yes. <laughs> Three bedrooms uh, and uh, two bathrooms, and you love it. $475, and uh, we mow the lawn, and we and, uh, we keep the light on for you. I don't know, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Sometimes I embarrass myself by own ineptitude. Anyway, how old is Eddie Arnold? We're going to start with you, Mike Epstein, because you look like you really know. Well, it, I was hoping I'd go last because I really do know. He's um, 72 today. He's 70. You really do know he's 72. He's 72. Okay, that was a little couplet, too, you just made there. He, you, I really do know. I really I, do. I, know, I really 72. do. He's 72. Okay, Karen, what do you think? You want me to do that? Keep the, let the world, what is what, is, what was I singing? Uh, make the world go oh, away. Ma uh, make the world go away. <laughs> How about you, instead of that, if you can't do that, could you make Eddie Arnold go away? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Karen? Karen might have gone home. Are you there, Karen? Day. Wait, oh, you know what happened? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't push the right buttons to bring her on. Are you there, Karen, now? I pressed the right buttons. She's still not there. Wow. <laughs> oh, there you are, Karen. You there? <laughs> Okay, well, anyway, maybe she'll come back with us later on after the war, <laughs> when the world is at peace, and we're once again outside picking peaches as we did before the war. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, Tess, <laughs> what do you think? How old is uh, Eddie Arnold? I'm going to go with the illustrious Mike Epstein and say he's also 72. Also 72. Okay. And uh, Lisa, what do you think? I'm also going to say 72. 72. I think I see a trend starting here. Yeah, it seems I to be. It seems to be. It seems to be. A trend. You're a natural leader, Mike. <laughs> you are. He has always been that way. That's why yeah, he's still working. Yeah, very good at, at, at seeming to be honest. <laughs> I'm sorry. What did you just say? Or very good at seeming to be at faking. In other words, oh, knowing. you oh you think he might have been faking with that 72. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Michael, see if Michael... You wouldn't do that Mike, to Mike, us, though, would you? No. I, I'm going the other way. Yeah? Go um, for it, Michael. Uh, let's go with uh, 75. 75? Oh, you're going a little higher than that. Okay. And Susan, what do you think? Well, I, I was truly vacillating between 72 and 73. Yeah. Um, but my aunt, who was a tremendous fan of Eddie Arnold... She's 72. I'll go with 72 also. 72 also? Yep. Okay. Actually, uh, he is actually 78. Wow. <laughs> Mikey. 78. Hey, so Michael. So yeah. Oh, seduced and abandoned. There we go. So there's now a four-way tie. Oh, my God. Yeah, there's a, nothing seems to be getting resolved. <laughs> no, both uh, Susan and uh, Michael from uh, Arlington and Lisa and Tess. All have two apiece, so we have a four-way tie. That means we should go with uh, at least one more, right? At least. At least one more. Okay. Lainey Kazan, <clears throat> did you see... Oh, no. Oh, oh. She was just saying, no, let me tell you who she is. You might know her. <clears throat> she may want to clear my throat. <laughs> Most people turn their microphones off and clear their throat so you can't hear it. I do it. I do everything on my on on, on the microphone, including sneezing, coughing. Well, we want to know all your business. Be What's all that? All your business. We want no, to well, but because I believe in truth and advertising. If we're going to do it, you might as well hear it. Right. That's my slogan. We do it, you hear it. Excuse me while I cough. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Lori, uh, Lainey Kazan, uh, who's a, a fine singer, but maybe not known as much that much now. Did you see? Uh, my favorite year, oh. the the movie no, with no. A, was a takeoff on a Sid Caesar, the old Sid Caesar, your show of shows, it was called my favorite year. Did you win any awards, no? I won, I I, I win them all the time. I can't keep track of them. <laughs> but Peter O'Toole was in that movie. Mark Lynn Baker, who, who's uh, who's in television. Um, I think I can help. And yeah. he is. She was the mother. Is this in Karen? Beaches. Is this Karen again? Oh, oh no, that's Tess. I'm yes. sorry. She's the mother in Beaches. 
Oh, is she? Yeah, she was the mother in Beaches. She played the mother, uh, the, the grandmother of one of the characters on 90210. And she was the crazy neighbor in Harry and the Andersons. Okay, she's a... She's a what? I never saw any of those. Uh, Be because I know, I know uh, when they were out. Because she's a funny lady, and uh, uh, it's a wonderful year, which was one of my uh, my favorite year, rather, which is one of my favorite movies. If you ever get a chance to rent the the, the video of that, by all means, they, it's it's well worth it. But she's in that too. She's a she's a fun, she's a funny lady. Anyway, so I'll, why don't you go first then, Test? How old do you think that uh, mm. Lauren Ke Laura Kazan is? Fifty one. Oh, Lainey Kazan, fifty one. Okay. 51, says uh, Tess. And uh, what do you say, Michael, from uh, Arlington? Yeah. <laughs> um. You say, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I say, that's what I say, too. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um. <laughs> wow. Uh, Tess said 51, right? Yes. Um. Yeah. 54. 54. Okay. Uh, let's see. Mike, what do you think? Mike Epstein? 61. 61, okay, and uh, Karen, we're still not hearing from Karen, eh? I guess not. Karen, maybe she might have gotten the call from Hollywood already. She may be yeah, on the her way. Maybe. What's that? Of a traffic said, report. Yeah, maybe, yeah. yeah, she may be on her way, you know. But we could have used her lie detector or her lie detector on the last round. Mm -hmm. Maybe she abandoned it. We can go over to the traffic headquarters and pick it up. <laughs> yeah. Susan, what do you think? How old do you think, uh, uh, Lanny? No, no clue. Fifty-eight. Fifty-eight. Okay. And uh, Lisa. Oh. What's the highest in Kyle's? The highest so far is fifty-eight. That Susan just said. No, I think somebody. No, I. I someone said, oh, said sixty-one. Sorry. That's I right. My, Mike Epstein said sixty-one. That's correct. All right, I shouldn't do this after I. I've gone with you twice, and I've wound up wrong, but I'm going to... Do it me again, baby. It'll be worth it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this program I... just reeks with sensuous quality that's driving me go. crazy. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. I'm putting myself in your hands. No, oh, please okay. do, Lisa. Okay. <laughs> what do you... I'm, I'm sorry, did you give a guess yet, or am I... One. How much? Because I, I think she is older than the ones they've given. Okay, so, so you're saying 61 then. Is that the same as Mike? Is that it? Yes. Okay. Uh, actually, uh, Lainey Kazan is 56. Now, let me see. Did we break the tie? We have uh, we have two winners. We have uh, Susan, who was two years off. She said 58. Michael said 54, which is two years off. So those two won. Let me see. Now, does that break anything? Uh, Susan now has... Uh, Three correct answers, and Michael has two. No, Michael has three also. Yeah. And uh, Lisa has two, and Tess has two. So it's a tie between Susan and Michael. You want to do one more? We may yeah. as well. We might as well. Might what as what as else well. we got this to do? That's right. I got I, I to be here till five o'clock anyway. Yeah, so what? That. What's the big deal? <laughs> I can't leave till then anyway. And if, if if we dismiss all these wonderful contestants and the people on the panel, what do I do? I sit here and talk to myself, which is kind of boring even to me. Okay, how about uh, Trini Lopez? I know we'd get around to that. Okay, let me tell you about uh, Trini Lopez. He was he's an entertainer, born Trini Lopez the third in uh, Dallas, Texas. His biggest hit, if I had a hammer. It was in 1963. There you um, go. Before we go any further, yes, I, I, I just got a page from a friend of mine who I know is listening. Um, Kathy, give me about five minutes, and I'll call you. Thank you. Now back to the oh, show. They, oh, they, they paid you right here at BZ? Well, I mean, she, she's got my page number. You have a you have your you have a page on the whole thing. Isn't He's that a wonderful? swinging guy. Yeah, son of a gun. That's wonderful. Her name is Kathy. Hi, Kathy. No, she'd rather me say that. <laughs> okay, Norm, go ahead. Hi, Kathy, baby. What was that year again, Norm? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, the uh, Trini Lopez. I believe it was 1962. 1963. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, no, the biggest hit, Trini Lopez's biggest hit, if I had a hammer, was 1963. Frank Sinatra saw him appearing at PJ's nightclub in Los Angeles and signed him to his label and started his career. I didn't I didn't know that. Frank Sinatra, too? Frank Sinatra started him as on his way. Is that what you were asking? Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's what that's what happened. I yeah. thought he started hearing the traffic report. 
Uh, let me see. Hold on. I know. Check yes. the list, Norm. Check it again. No, he well, did. Frank Sinatra didn't. You said he didn't make it, I believe. So. No, he did not. So no, he no, he, no, he didn't. He, in fact, he still. In fact, he was almost making the traffic reporter. But uh, Sinatra said, "Don't do it. You won't like it." However, Eddie Arnold was a traffic reporter here. <laughs> Even before there were cars, he was a traffic reporter. Doing so that was a tough job. On the yeah, that's right. Anna Maria Albergetti used to sing the reports. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. How about Ernie Bach? Was he a traffic reporter? <laughs> Ernie Bach? Who's that? He, he sells cars down in Norwood. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay, how about uh, no, Trini, Trini Lopez then? Uh, Susan, what do you think? Um, I, I think he's somewhere in the vicinity of uh, probably 59. 59. Okay. And uh, what do you think, Michael from Arlington? Ooh. This, uh, this is big because you, you are tied yeah, this is big. with, with this is Susan. Really big. This, is, this could be a time. Humongous. This is humongous. As a matter of fact, there's several reporters from, uh, like the Brockton Enterprise, the Middleborough Gazette, <laughs> the Chelsea Record, the Salem Evening News, they're all in oh. here covering this story. What do I do? Um, in the New York Times. No, they, they won't have anything to do with it. <laughs> um, uh, 60... The Linfield Saugus Hadassah <laughs> Newsletter is here. The top <laughs> reporter from that is here. Yeah, i got to throw my answer out, right? Oh, I'm sorry, but tell me, yeah, no, what is your answer? I'm going to go with 67. 67. Mm. Okay, what do you think, Lisa? Um, what was the one year you gave, 63? 63. <clears throat> yes. 63 was his, uh, if I had a hand. I've never even heard of this person, although I've heard of that song. Oh, Trini Lopez. No, I'm mean, he's, he's fairly well known. When Lemon Tree? I thought it was a woman. Mm. <laughs> I wasn't even sure. No, this is a man. Hold on a minute while I check. <laughs> yeah, it's a man. <laughs> I'm not going to ask, well, in any of it. Wouldn't it be funny if cats or dogs checking a person's sex turned them upside down like we do to animals? Wow. Hung, hung us by our feet so they could check to see whether we're male or female. That'd you know be, the, humiliation we, the humiliation we put them through? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I they, think kind of, they, they kind of basically do that when you're born, though, don't they? I guess they do, I suppose. I, I can't remember that well, far back. hanging by your feet. I guess so. Hey, it's a boy. <clears throat> we started out life totally undignified. Anyway, Lisa, how old do you think Trini Lopez is? Um, well, let's see. That was 33 years ago. And 68. 68. Okay. And uh, Tess? Oh, I'm still playing? Um, yeah, we're, we're still playing. We started. No, I thought, it was, I, I thought it was down one. <laughs> I thought we were just down to the two people that were tied. No, I, I suppose we should be just to break the tie, but okay. I'm bringing everybody into this just to make it more confusing. Trini Lopez. Well, thank you. Then we still have a chance. Trini, yeah. Lopez is, Trini Lopez is, it's coming to me now, Norm. He's 74. 74. You can wait and call uh, <laughs> Tiffany, the uh, psychic, and ask her <laughs> later on this week. Okay, Ka Karen, no, Karen is not with us. Uh, I probably, miss her, too. She's probably on her way home by now. Listen, she's she's going to see every last report, yeah. I'm sure she's got to sell your phone. Call up. We could do that, I yeah. have abandonment issues, you know, and, and she's, she just left. Did she get any correct answers? I'm gonna I say if she's mad no, at no. Actually, she hasn't. No, she's not in the running anyway. So, but I just like talking with her because she she sounds yeah. nice. No, put me down for seventy-one. Seventy-one for Mike. Okay, and uh, this this is this will be the final round. Actually, he's he's fifty-nine. He's a lot younger than anybody said, and you may have said the youngest. You said seventy-one. Everybody said seventy-two, seventy-four, and seventy-five. No, I said sixty-nine, didn't I? Or 68? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong column. <laughs> Excuse me. You said 59, Susan. That's correct. And he is 59. No, I said 69. Well, okay. You said 69? Yes. Is this Susan? Susan? No. This no. Is no, Susan. Susan, did you say 59? Yes, I did. Yes, you did. You said it right on the button. That's great. Okay, so that means somebody said, well, so Susan is our winner. Oh, yay. Yeah, and Susan gets a whole bunch of junk. Because that's the kind of prizes we give away on this thing. 
Yeah, no, okay. We're going to turn you over to Mike, Susan, so he can get your name and address, and we'll send the stuff out to you, okay? Okay, that's wonderful, but could I please say it was nice chatting with all of you? Thank you, Susan. Nice chatting yeah. with you, Yes, it was yeah, nice it was... talking to you, too. It was, it was a great game. It yeah, was. it is. It, it was, was a great it's, it's, it's a, it, it was, it was a lot of fun tonight. It came down to the wire, but hey, what can you do? Everybody keep in touch. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, Michael, uh, Mike Epstein is talking to Susan. I'll get her name and address. And I thank you, Michael, from Arlington. You're, you're a nice man, and I appreciate having you with us. Thank you, Noah. And you too, Lisa. Thanks. I had a great time. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Take care. And, of course, Tess, I appreciate you being here, and, and also uh, Mike Epstein. And I appreciate, I don't know, I guess I just appreciate being alive. And now I'd like to sing for you a medley of Menachem Begin songs. <laughs> I have no idea what, where that came from. As well to uh, uh, whatever his name was, the uh, part that Tom Hanks played, Sam mm. Baldwin, right? Right. That his wife had done the same thing, I guess. So that was the connection, the, you know, one of those personal connections between two people that had never seen each other. Well, mm -hmm. rather than getting into anything beyond that as being too profound, uh, by chance, do you ever happen to hear of uh, Chet Baker, the uh, blue horn trumpet, trumpet player? Oh, I loved his stuff, especially with uh, the, some of the stuff he did with Jerry Mulligan. Well, I'm happy we're getting into it because I had an opportunity to see him in a small club. Uh, it was patterned after, in Paris, that is. It was patterned after that uh, the Blue Note, I guess it was. And this club itself was uh, off the shop, the Lise, uh Rue Washington, Rue Mar Marboth. Uh, ring a bell, somewhere in the area. No, the one, you know, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, I saw Chet Baker uh, when he was performing in Paris, one of these clubs that's, you know, below sea level. Hey, the uh, was it, it was called The Cat That Cried or something like that. Uh, could you tell me what year? Let's see, what year would that have been? That would have been, uh, that would have been way back in the 60s you sometime. Got it. Well, could it have been sometime uh, early summer 1962? Yes, it could have been. Well, it could have been a, around then, or maybe, the maybe a little bit later. The thing that disappointed me, because I I, I loved the Jerry Mulligan, Chet Baker group when they did the Lady Is a Tramp and a lot of really nice things. So I, I, I when my wife and I were in Paris, we we found out where he was and we went down to watch him. And we should have both run into each other because we may have been actually in the very same place. That could be. The only problem was I talked to Chet. I tried to talk to him, and the guy was so high on drugs. Well, he did, he wait had a minute. Let me back up. He had just come in from Rome where he had selectively gotten past a drug charge, and, and I saw him perform because I read about it in the paper while I was there uh, that he had, came, had come in to play. But he played solo with a girl singer, and it was the first time I heard uh, a solo sing uh, with a reverb unit to, uh, you know, alter her voice somewhat. Oh, really? Does that ring a bell? Was that no, no, that, within I, club? I, I don't remember there being a woman with him. Well, I did see this, and, and by chance, was the club just a short, oh, let's say, less than uh, a quarter of a mile parallel in from the Chateau Lisée? Does that ring a bell? Yeah, it, it, it was in that general area, yeah. yes, so yes. So was in the area of the Lido? Boy, I, you know, it's we're talking well, 30 years ago. Well, right? I've got a clear memory of it, uh, as well as anything else, because I did a lot of hoofing on foot in Paris myself as a... Oh, uh, it, as a dancer? ...as of the United States Army. Uh, ah. well, oh, I see. Sam, uh, one of those deals. Mm. Uh, but, of course, his work on uh, World Pacific uh, with Bud Shank and some of those other artists I thought was pretty pretty good mellow stuff. That oh, I thought his stuff was great, and I loved, I even loved his singing. It wasn't superb, but it was a nice, gentle kind of sound, very much like the way he played trumpet. Well, you know, he, he kind of, uh, if you, he, as an individual who fit the times, straining a point, he kind of re reminded me of stature, uh, appearance-wise, some dumpy cross between uh, James Dean and... Uh, George Reeves, the Superman. Yes, yeah, yeah. Without, yeah, when without you, when him you... wearing glasses. He had a certain... And he was in one or two movies. Uh, but I wanted to tell you, did you know about his demise in 1988? Well, that had to do with uh, either falling or you being pushed it. out of a, a hotel window. You got it, yep. yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nobody's quite sure whether he committed suicide uh, or whether he was pushed or 
whether the drugs got to him and he just didn't know what he was doing. Well, we know he certainly didn't survive, did he? No, he did not. That was that was the end of him. That was too bad because I I liked the way he played, the way he sang, but he just he absolutely destroyed himself. I think he lost most of his teeth and everything somewhere along the line. Yeah, yeah. So it must have been tough to play the trumpet. You know, he had, the embouchure was pretty well gone. <laughs> yeah, right, because because the acoustics are gone within the uh, the fr framework of the mouth and that cavity to produce the sounds. Right. And everything else as a technique, and he certainly had it at one time. Uh, no, it was, it was terrible to see his end, Dave. Well, I'm happy that we both are hitting on roughly the same story, because I think I saw it in Rolling Stone or Spin Magazine, which of the two back in uh, June of 1988, as I recall. Yeah. Does that ring a bell? Uh, well, yes. Yes, it does. And uh, by chance, uh, remember you had a caller, oh, perhaps by this time a month ago, he was, well, it was about cars and stuff, and he was telling you about the Kaiser? Yes, yes. Kaiser Fraser line? I just, you know, vaguely remember the call, yes. Well, I, I did want to zero in on, on some p particular cars, and one was the uh, Kaiser Manhattan sedan itself. Were you familiar with that? No, not really. I remember the Kaiser and the Fraser, you know, put well, on the same company, but not specific models. Yes, but this was, by a given approach competitively, uh, Kaiser's big move to actually... Uh, produce a car with real futuristic looks and it truly did because it had more of a, a slightly what you'd call a a, a turtle to, a turtle back top to it or a bubble top okay mm. a, a pronounced curvature to uh, accommodate more headroom within the car but the rest of the below below the belt line lines that is that lie below the uh, window edges themselves were pretty pretty well uh, out there to actually uh, produce a car that really had some striking good looks to it, more so than even the uh, the, the major uh, car manufacturers. Mm. Uh, yeah, it was. In fact, uh, I think you also, were, as of that conversation, delving into the uh, sport coupe, uh, the uh, Kaiser uh, Darren sport coupe. Yes. Well, if you ever want to see a picture, uh, see the car in person, I think. Uh, Gig Young is driving it in that movie for uh, Desperate Hours with Frederick March and uh, Humphrey Bogart. Oh, uh, really? Now, what about? Uh, can you hold on a second while I just do a couple of commercials, and yeah. I'll get right back. I'm sorry to ho hold you up, but I, there's some of them I have to get on by a certain time. So hold on, I'll be right back with you. Hey, you got a new cell phone. How do you like it? Oh, it's great. I got all the features I need, like alphanumeric memory, yeah. and voicemail, and more. Really? Where'd you get it? BJ's Wholesale Club. They're an authorized agent for Cellular One. Wow. So, uh, where's yours? Well, I've been uh, meaning to get one, but I... <laughs> but it, what? Well, BJ's Cellular Centers are dedicated exclusively to cell phones and pagers. Really? Their sales staff is fully trained to answer any questions and assist you in every way. Hmm. Because it's BJ's Wholesale Club, you know the prices are great, hmm. and they have a 30-day money-back guarantee. Yeah, and they're an authorized agent for uh, Cellular One, too. Exactly. Right? Hmm. And BJ's has a complete line of new phones. And if you sign up with Cellular One by May 31st, you get weekends free through the end of July with the Assurance Choice Plus plan. So I guess I really don't have any excuses. No, you don't. No, I guess I don't. <laughs> BJ Cellular Centers are in Auburn, Denver, Scranton, and London, to Medford, Stoneham, Stoughton, Westboro, and Wayman. Offer available for new customers only. Requires a credit approval and one-year contract. Long-distance interconnected roaming charges apply. Insurance Choice Plus plan available with free weekends through July 31st, 1996. BJ's Wholesale Clubs. We'll change your standard of living. Would you like to learn how to transfer your estate to your family quickly, avoiding taxes and probate fees? Sound good? Attorneys Guglielmo and Cody of Braintree are offering free seminars to educate you on living trusts. At these lively and easy-to-understand seminars, they'll show you how you can retain control over your assets during your life and distribute them to your loved ones without court intervention. You'll also have the opportunity to ask attorneys Guglielmo and Cody specific questions. To reserve a seat, call 356-1520 and attend one of these free seminars Wednesday, May 15th at the Sheridan Tower in Braintree, Thursday, May 16th, at the Holiday Inn in Newton at 10 a.m., 2 p.m., or 7 p.m. There will also be a seminar on Saturday, May 18th, 10 a.m. at 10 Forbes Road in Braintree. Seating is limited, so reserve your space at one of these free seminars by attorneys Guglielmo and Cody of Braintree. Call 356-1520. Just for attending, you receive a free informational guide and a free one-hour consultation. Seating is limited, so call today, 356-1520. <laughs> Office. Yes, I was charged for an office visit that I don't even remember. Oh, what's the day? June 14th, 1935. That was 60 years ago. Oh! 
missed it by that much. You know, I don't recall that commercial and would have really enjoyed hearing the whole thing. Please like, subscribe, and share on any and all the platforms you listen to us on. And don't be shy, I love reading your comments. Until next week, closing the vault and leaving this world a little sillier than we found it. For predate lie detector tests, alluring sirens, Tom Bodette and Motel 6, picking peaches, the Tennessee Plowboy, sensuous quality programming, responding to a page from someone named Kathy, Ernie Bach, living trusts, my first cell provider from all the way back in 1993, Cellular One, enterprises, gazettes, records, news, and newsletters. Mike Epstein, the missing Karen Regal from Traffic, and the man embarrassed by his own ineptitude, Norm, we do it, you hear it, Nathan. I'm Tony Nesbitt.